All right, welcome back to our final lesson before we go to spring break. Um, when we come back from spring break, there will be more lessons for you guys as, well, we have another week of uh, coronation going on. So uh, without further ado, we're going to start lesson five. Hopefully you guys have your notes out ready. If not, pause this and go get them because you're going to be doing a little bit of writing probably. So today we're going to start talking about reform and women's rights in lesson five. And mostly we're going to focus on the driving factors behind what's going to start this whole reform movement. So um, just keep in mind, today we're only starting the beginning of it, and we're going to talk about what is going to drive these reforms to happen. So vocab you have for this section is social reform, second great awakening, debtor, temperance movement, Seneca Falls Convention, women's rights convention. That is your vocab for this chapter. Please make sure you write those down so you do have a place to define them. Um, if we finish this chapter before we go back, which it looks like we will, um, we will have either an open book test via Google Forms that I will set up for you, or um, we will be doing a um, open book test as soon as we get back. So keep that in mind. Make sure you have everything organized and ready to go for when that happens. So the period between 1815 and 1860 in the United States is sometimes called the era of reform because there were so many movements for social reform during this period. Reformers fought to end slavery, increase access to education, improve conditions in prisons, and expand women's rights and much, much more. So these are the kind of reforms we will be talking about. But today, we're not going to be talking about the reforms necessarily. We're going to talk about what drives these reforms to take place and this movement to begin starting. So social reform is an organized attempt to improve what is unjust or imperfect in society. So think about it a little bit. If you look around, you will be able to see many things in society that just aren't right that should be fixed. And so to get this done, a lot of social reform will take place. The impulse towards social reform will have both political, social, and religious causes. And we'll talk about all three of those causes today. So political ideals will lead to reform. So we're going to talk about the political aspect of it first. So remember during the Jacksonian era, politics was becoming more and more democratic. During the Jacksonian era, more people were now able to vote than ever were before. But you got to remember it was also mainly white men that voted. Women were still not allowed to vote at this point in time. More people could vote and take part in the government than ever before during the Jacksonian era. And also remember they changed how they elected people to run for office during this period of time. Some critics also said American society was not living up to its ideals. And remember we talked about the ideals way back when, when we first started the year. So this could be a little trip down memory lane for you. They pointed to the promise of liberty and equality expressed in the Declaration of Independence that did say all men are created equal. Society based on these ideals um, would not allow slavery. So this is where the abolitionist movement will get its roots. Um, you're going to see abolitionists um, using the idea of liberty and equality to talk about why slavery should be outlawed. And others will ask why women have fewer rights than men, because that also has to do with equality. So you're going to see a woman's movement and the abolitionist movement starting because of political ideals. And by changing these injustices, reformers will hope to move the nation closer to its political ideals of liberty and equality for all. Social conditions at the time are also going to start to call for reform. So in the Industrial Revolution, um, there will be a huge change in the American economy, working conditions, and cities are going to grow very rapidly. And so remember how dirty we talked about the cities were? Um, there's no actual running water, so you had to go to a well or a river running through the city. That's where you got your water from. Um, there was no sewer system. So, well, if you had to go to the bathroom, guess what? You, uh, you dumped all that. You wasted and um, out into the streets and that will seep in your water supply and so disease and dirt and filth will just be rampant throughout the city streets in all major cities especially in the north and the south. Crowded cities will create new challenges for social well-being 
And those challenges are the disease and just filth and disgusting things just everywhere in the cities. And at the same time, there would be a growing need for an educated workforce. So education wasn't necessarily a critical aspect at the time in American society, but it will start becoming more and more important um, with the growing workforce and the need for more skilled workers. And as American society changes, it will require new institutions to meet its changing needs. So we're going to need to set up new systems, new things for people to be able to have and have support them for, um, for them to be able to function and for society to be able to function. And so we're going to talk about that coming up as well. And the main push will be the second great awakening and um, what it causes. So the second great awakening is what we're going to focus on pretty much the remainder. So during the colonial era, many American Protestant Christians will believe in predestination. Predestination is this idea that God decides in advance which people would attain salvation after death. In other words, it's determined before you are even born whether or not you are going to heaven and hell according to this predestination idea with Protestant Christians. And this belief will lead many people to worry that they could do nothing to be saved at this point. So basically, no matter what your actions were in life, you were predetermined to go one place or the other. And so that was not a real comforting feeling to a lot of people, that they had no control over their fate. So during the 1700s, Protestant thinkers in England and the colonies will begin to argue that salvation depended on a person's action in this life. So basically... They're going to start arguing that predestination isn't a thing and that how you behave throughout your life, if you're a good person or a bad person, will determine where you end up going in the afterlife. Its leaders will stress free will rather than predestination, and they taught that individuals could save their souls by their own actions. So this will be a new thought process um, being brought into the colonies and also England that individuals you can save yourself you're not predetermined where you're going to go and so this will start changing the thinking of a lot of people in society and in the early 1800s a dynamic religious movement known as the second great awakening will sweep the american nation now arguments by religious thinkers were the main cause of this movement known as the second great awakening another cause with the democratic split or sorry spirit of the jacksonian era which encouraged people to think independently and not blindly obey established religious authorities. So the Second Great Awakening is going to come about um, because of this new way of thinking religiously, but also that during the Jacksonian era and all this new democratic spirit, the right to choose your own electors, um, things like this, it's going to teach people to think for themselves and not just follow along with the mass crowd is doing. And so um, to stir these religious feelings, um, preachers will hold, hold what we call revivals, which are basically huge outdoor meetings where they're going to talk about um, salvation and different things like this, what people can do to better help themselves and also better society. And so revivals can last for days and also attract thousands of people to them. So when a preacher is holding a revival, he's going to be able to reach out to a very, very large group of people all at once. And one leader of the Second Great Awakening would be Charles Grandison Finney. Now, as a powerful speaker, Finney taught that individual salvation was the first step towards the complete reformation of the whole world. So just the fact that you can save yourself on an individual base basis is just going to be the first step in this reformation. And that many more steps will need to be added afterwards to help change and reform the entire world. And such teachings had effects that would change the country, inspiring a number of new social reform movements. So um, Father Finney will basically, with his idea of you're able to create your own fate and destiny, um, speeches along with that this is only the first step and it's up to us to change the world into the way we need it to be, is going to inspire a lot of people and begin a lot of the different social reforms. 
And so these would range from equal education for women and African Americans to the abolitionist movement. So a lot of movements will be inspired by Father Finney and the Second Great Awakening. And inspired by religion, these social reformers will begin um, a lasting tradition in American culture of working to improve society. And so this isn't going to be the only time in history that a large group of people are going to be working to change our society. Um, continue on into the 1880s when you guys come back in high school um, history, we will be discussing basically the second industrial age in the United States and the different reforms of the progressive movement, um, as well as the civil rights movement. Numerous other things are going to happen, and a lot would be inspired by these thoughts of the original um, reform movements that are going to take place between 1815 and 1860. So this is where I leave you for today. Um, no homework tonight. Just make sure you guys took some decent notes during this. Um, and I will see you guys Monday after spring break. Not at school, but through this. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.